Hi everyone, it's Veronica and in this video I'll show you how to use the random number variable in Storyline 360 to create a random generator. In my example, we'll create a 90 things to do in ISO generator. So we tap the button and we get a result here for an activity that we might want to do. If we tap it again, we should get a completely different one randomly generated from the 90 options that we have. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So back here in Storyline Edit View, you can see that I have 30 tiles on my screen, 6 by 5, and each of these contains three activities. So I've got a blank slide here and I'll go through the process once. I'll come up here and insert a shape, just a rounded rectangle will do. I'll style it however I like. And then I'll create three states for this shape. I'll call the first activity one, and then I'll duplicate that state and call that activity two and activity three. Each of these states can be styled however you want, and we'll take a look at mine in just a second. But basically, Activity 1 will have the text for the activity in here. Activity 2 will have another activity, and Activity 3 will have a different activity again. So in my example, I have 30 tiles and each one has three activities. That's 90 activities in total. And if we go back to this one, we've got 30 tiles and each one has three states. Now, once you create your first one, you want to make sure that you do a couple of things. First, you want to make sure you label it in your timeline so that when you duplicate, you can quickly and easily relabel all of them because you want to make sure that you are very clear on which tiles you're going to be triggering. As there will be lots of triggers created in this interaction. Step two is to create a tap button or click or start or generate button. And this is a simple shape a round shape in my example, but you can do whatever you like with the word tap inside of it. We'll look at the triggers shortly, and that's all there is to this one in terms of creating it. For step three, you want to create a layer. In my case, I called it colored intro. And you can see that this layer contains what seems to be the same tiles, so 30 tiles across the screen, and also a tap button. So let's investigate this a little further. Each of these shapes, I'll go into this one here, is actually a group of tiles. A few things to notice. We've got a timeline that is only 2.25 seconds long, so quite short. And each of these groups is made up of four tiles that only last 0.5 seconds. And each of these looks a bit different. I've only changed the color. So we have four tiles made into a group lasting in total two seconds, but they come in at a staggered pace. So again, with this one, I would recommend creating one of your groups with all four of your shapes, formatting them how you like, and making sure that the timings are right and the staggering entry is also right. Once you've got that, you can go through the process of duplicating and relabeling in your timeline, because again, this is going to really help you when it comes time to make all those triggers. Step four is to create a variable. Now, I already have one created in here. It's called random activity. It's a number variable because you need a number variable to create the random generator. It's set to a default value of zero. And to create the variable, you just click on the plus icon, name your variable, anything you like, something that makes sense to you. Select number from the drop down menu and then add the default value. I'll cancel that because I already have mine. So the next step is to create triggers on this layer that will cause the state of these tiles on the base layer to change 
to something random and therefore show a randomly generated activity. So I've got triggers like this one. There are 90 of those because we have 90 activities. The trigger is change the state of tile one, not on the slide layer, but on the base. Change state of tile one to activity one when the timeline ends on this layer. Remember this layer has a very short timeline, only 2.25 seconds. So it's going to allow for the tiles to come in and out and change colors or produce that effect of changing colors. And then when the timeline ends, this trigger is going to fire, but only if the variable random activity I created is equal to one. As I said, this trigger is duplicated 90 times and each time I'm changing the activity under tile one. So I have three triggers for tile one and three triggers for tile two and so on. So this one is changing the state of tile one to activity two when the timeline ends and it will be the same for all of them. This time, if random activity is equal to the value of two, so all the way down in my triggers panel, you can see down to a value of 90. So there are 90 triggers like this one. You can create your first one and then copy and paste them and change the information straight here in the triggers panel. Step six will require us to go to the base layer and create the randomization also using triggers. So we have this trigger on the base layer. Let's open it up. We have this trigger to adjust the variable and we want to adjust that number variable to be set to random between the numbers of one and 90. So we have set random activity to, and this is the key choice, not to a value or to another variable, but to random. Then you need to select the range within which you'd like that variable to generate a number. So every time this adjusts, it'll select randomly a number between one and 90. And in my case, it's going to happen when the user clicks the button tap. So that's the first trigger. The second trigger is to show layer colored intro when the user clicks the button tap. So when this is tapped or clicked, the num the random number variable, I should say, is going to generate a number and it's going to show the user the colored intro. When they arrive at the layer, this is going to play out. And the state of one of the tiles on the base layer is going to be randomly changed based on this random variable. Finally, we have another trigger here on the layer that says hide this layer when the timeline ends. So this layer is going to play out the tiles based on the timeline. They'll stagger in and out to produce that effect of turning on and off. And when the timeline ends, it's going to hide the layer and therefore show the activity that's been randomly generated. One final thing that I did for this interaction is here on the base layer. I also created a trigger or rather 30 triggers to change the state of each of these tiles back to normal when the user clicks tap. The reason I did this is because I wanted the learner to be able to tap this button over and over and over again as much as they want and get a different activity each time. So I wanted the base layer to look like it does at the start. So that these star shapes behind the activities did not show through when the user was on this layer and also because I didn't want the first activity to be showing when they selected the second activity and so on and so on. So I basically wanted this slide to be set to completely normal from scratch every time that they touch this button. So we tap the button that's going to generate a random number. The layer is going to play and then the layer is going to hide and show us an activity. When I tap this again, all of the tiles will be set to normal. It's going to go back to the layer and then it's going to hide and show us another activity. There's a blog post linked in the description box that includes the source file for this interaction. 
so you can download it if you'd like to take a look under the hood. I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you next time.